everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about Google Meet. So if you're not familiar with Google Meet, Google Meet is Google's video conferencing software. It's formerly the Hangouts, which will eventually be going away. And it's what most Google schools are using for their online learning. So there's two ways you can get to Meet. You can get it through Google up in the top right hand corner here where they have all the apps. You can click on that. And then it's this icon right here. It's like a little text bubble with a video camera in it. Or you can go to meet.google.com and that will open up your Google Meet. So there's two different ways that you can start a meeting. You can either go down here where it says join or start a meeting. And you can give it a name. So we'll just call it EdTech. And you can see it's getting ready. Now what I'm going to do for our purposes, because you'll see that my voice is not synced up to the video because I'm using two different computers here is I'm going to turn my camera off here uh, just because I don't want it to be distracting. So what you can do is you can join now and this will create your room. So now I can copy the information, which is a link to get in. There's also a dial in phone number. So anybody who doesn't have a computer, who's uh, just wants to call in from a phone, they can use this number and then your pin here. Or you can just add people in. You can type in their email addresses or name and add them in. Or you can actually call their phone number to join them in. So that's how you would add people. And as people accept your invitation, they will start to appear in your screen. And there's different setups, but most of the time they'll appear here in the middle. If a lot of people join, it'll happen over on the side here, but I'll show you how you can configure that in a second. A couple options that you can see at the bottom is if you wanted to mute your microphone, you would click on this here and you can see that now it's red with a line through it, meaning nobody can hear me. And you saw how earlier I turned off my camera. It'd be the same to turn it on and to turn it off. There are a few other options here at the bottom. One of those is to turn on captions. So if I was to turn on the captions, you can see that Google has software that will start to transcribe everything that's being said. And then to turn those off, just click it again and they go away. There is an option to present your screen. So if you click present now, this will allow everybody in your meeting to see what you want them to see on your computer. So you can show them either everything on your screen, or if you had a couple different windows, you could just pick a window. We'll just do entire screen here. Now, this is really important. If you want to show people your screen, you have to click on the actual box. Uh, you'll see there's a blue box that goes around it. This is letting you know that you have this box selected and then click share. And now everybody who's in my meeting will see everything that's on my screen. And then when you're done, you can just do stop sharing here at the bottom. And then it goes back to regular where they would just see uh, the person talking. A couple other options over in the bottom right hand corner. Now, one of the options is to record meeting. Now, depending on your district, you may have a, a district policy on whether or not video conferences should be recorded. Uh, if you don't have one, my recommendation is to always record the meetings. Uh, one, it's good because if you have students who aren't able to make your live class, then you can always post the recording later for people who weren't able to make it. And two, it's just good for you as a teacher to have everything that happened. Um, it, what will happen is when you finish recording, again, you come back down here and stop recording. What it will do is it will email you it will also put a copy of it in your Google Drive. So you'll have it in a couple different places. A few other options is you can change the layout. So this is what I was mentioning before where uh, you can decide how you want this configured. And one of the things that I have heard Google is working on is a grid view like Zoom. I know that's been a big thing for teachers. So I know that's one thing that's working on. And there are plugins uh, that you can use that will give you that right away. There are also some other options to go full screen, to turn on the captions. There are some settings here that you can play around with for your audio and video. 
Uh, and then there is the, you know, use a phone for audio if you didn't want to use your regular stuff. A couple other options here. Uh, up top here is a chat. So if you have students and you want them to uh, ask questions while you're doing it, you can recommend that they use the chat so that they're not all interrupting while you're presenting. So one of the things that I did was I went ahead and I added my other email accounts in just so you can see some of the other options that you have as a host. So when I click on the people, it shows you who's in the video conference with you. And what you can do is you have a few options. And I already muted my microphone because I was getting some feedback. But you can turn off somebody's microphone. You can also pin that person. So that's all. That's the person that you would see on the screen no matter who else is talking. Uh, you can also remove that person from your video conference. So if I wanted to remove my other account, I can just click on the minus sign and remove and then they are removed from the meeting and one thing that you'll see is i try to go back uh in after i was kicked out from my other email and this time it wouldn't let me automatically come back in it's asking the host if they want that person back in so i can either deny entry or i can admit them back in so if this was somebody who was just doing something that was distracting or foolish and you didn't want in the the video anymore you can just deny entry and then they won't be able to come back in one other thing I want to show you is how to create a Google Meet through Google Calendar. So when you go into your Google Calendar, if you click to create a new um, event, you can give it a title. And then you would add your guests as you normally would, set the time. But then down here it says add location or conferencing. And when you click on that, you can select add conferencing and that will create a Google Meet for you and then when you select the, the drop down there you can change the meeting ID you can change this I know sometimes I've gotten some letter combinations that seem a little inappropriate so uh, you can change those if you wanted to and then if you save after you've invited people they'll have the link right to your meet so then anybody that you added as a guest will have that invite you can also copy and paste the link and put it in like your Google Classroom or into an assignment or, you know, however you want to communicate that link to people. And then when you yourself or any of your guests click on the link, it will take you into that meeting. So this is just the basics of Google Meet. Uh, it is a fairly user friendly and intuitive software. There are a few limitations. Uh, one of them is the fact that when you create that room, uh, students can get into it as soon as they have that link, whether the teacher is in there or not. Same as if a teacher leaves the room, kids can stay in there or they can leave and come back in. I know that's something Google's working on. It should be fixed by the beginning of April. Uh, but it's just something that you want to be aware of. One of the best practices, I think, before that's fixed is to not share the link with students until right before you go in. Again, this is probably with the older students. But I know I've seen on social media students posting links to their uh, their Google Meets or their Zoom. And what's happening is they want people, they're inviting people in to come in and disrupt. So just one way to avoid that is to not share the information too far in advance. Uh, if you're using Google Meet in a way that's a little bit more creative than what I showed you today, I would love to hear about it. Please share all the ways you're using it in the comments below or reach out to me on Twitter at Dan Spada. I'd love to share that out with teachers because I know this is very new for a lot of teachers and a lot of educators right now are struggling with the best ways to use video with their classrooms. So uh, the more support we can give each other, the better. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.